Hello world, Zyceros here, bringing a hopefully quick tutorial on how to make an elbow move in the game Robots. Um, I'm going to have to be quick with this because I have an unregistered bandicam and thus only have 10 minutes. Um, and I have a tendency to <laughs> take forever to do these type of things. Um, what you'll need to start with uh, is obviously an elbow, like this one here. Um, some blocks to connect the two sides to the elbow so that you can act to actually move something otherwise this is kind of pointless and the camera is most likely going to be needed um, but I'll get to that later so what you want to do is hit tilt open up the programming uh, the visual programming menu then you want to click on the elbow because this is where the code is going to be most likely um, now I've got an elbow I want to control its angle, so I'll click on it, and you'll see it come up with a list of commands. Uh, the first ones here, with this symbol before them, are inputs, and they go all the way to here. These two are outputs. This one will output an analog number representing the um, current angle. This one represents the part itself. They're outside the scope of this. All we need for this particular one is the input of angle. Right now, I can give this a value. At the moment, it's not going to matter what value. Um, it should pick up the blocks, but something appears to be wrong at this current point in time. Um, maybe if I set it to a negative value. Okay, I'm not sure what's wrong with that. Just tab into the camera, try again, hmm, oh, I think I know what's happened, uh, one of these blocks is connected to the ground, yep, one of those blocks was connected to the ground, just ignore it, I'll have to remake these connection, this connection without it connecting to the ground, uh, okay, so, there, that should fix that, and now if I give it a value, I can move the block, uh, but obviously you want to control it with the cam uh, with the keyboard, not constantly changing it in the visual programming. So you're going to need to put in an input sampler. Input samplers allow you to take inputs from some form of external device. At the moment, it only allows keyboard, um, but in future, it'll allow controllers. Xbox controllers and stuff, uh, MIDI controllers, your phone if you have an app that allows it to interface with the computer, anything you want really. Um, but that has to be, that's still not available in this current build, which is version 0.0.6. Okay, now you just click it and you'll end up being able to get a this I input called positive. Um, right, I'll just set that to A, and I'll grab negative, and put set that to D. Right, these are the keys you want to use to control it. Um, note they don't have to be pos they don't have to be capital letters. Um, in this case, it works fine if they're not. Um, then you'll need an attack. This is how fast it will reach the maximum minimum values um, when you hold down the key. I'll show you that in a sec. And release is how fast it resets back to zero. Alright, so we'll set that to the same value as attack. Um, then sample, the pink here, pink hex represents our output, also the symbol, as you can see, it's the output symbol. Um, now, from now, this simple code here will allow me to hold A, and it will go positive, hold D, goes negative and if I let go it resets to zero. I probably don't want it to reset to zero every single time I do something so I'll change the release to zero. Right? See? It sticks where it is. Now if I change it to 100 it instantly goes to zero as soon as you let go of the key. Right? See? You can hold it instantly back to zero. Now I can also do the same with attack. Right? And instantly to one, instantly to minus one. Input sample is fluctuate between 1 and minus 1. That's their main purpose. Um, so, 
obviously 1 and minus 1 degree, not very much um, of an angle, so we're going to need something to make that bigger. This is where the sample mapper comes in, which I'll, you hold control, click, and it's another one of these um, upper ends here. Just tab through it, or type in sample mapper, either way will work. Um, obviously, we're taking a sample, right, from the input sampler, and it has ma minimum and maximum values of 1 and minus 1. That's fairly simple, I just explained that that was the case. Now you take a sample, right, let's just move this up a bit so you can easily see the, dif uh, the different marks, and now you hold control, take the sample, connect the sample input, connect it with the sample output from the input sampler. Now these values are the same, and they will stay the same, because this output is inputting to this input. So if I hold D, it goes negative, hold A, it goes positive. Right, nothing overly difficult there. Sure, you can work that out for your own, uh, how you can adapt that to your own applications if you're not building a moving elbow like we are here. Now we want to map it to, uh, it'll create a like linear map between two points. Um, so minus one will map to um, minus 90 at the moment. Now if I put in a max of 90, what will happen is if it's halfway between uh, minus 1 and 1, which is of course 0, it'd be halfway between minus 90 and 90, which is of course 0. If it's slight, uh, if it's 25% to one way, um, it'll be 25% to one way on the other side. So if it's 0.5 over here, it'll be point, uh, 45 over here. Right? Fairly simple way. Uh, and just quick explanation of these other things. This invert is an, um, uh, this invert input allows you to invert the output. You tell it whether you want to do it or not. There's also outputs mapped and inverted. Right? You'll just notice this is the same as changing this to true. Right? It literally just change it, swaps these two. And basically this means instead of going up when you go up in this, you'll go down on this side. Right? That's all it does. Um, if you use inverted instead of mapped, um, you can either do it through here or do it through the output. Now, anyway, take the mapped, connect to the angle. Right? Now you'll notice the angle's changed, uh, and I can now control it with A and D. If I want to reset, just once again put release in. Nothing too exciting there. Um, and that's pretty much how you create an elbow that you can control with the keyboard. Um, one last thing, keyboard commands, attached camera is, at, is normally required. Uh, normally you don't send input from your keyboard to a robot unless there's a camera that you've viewed, unless the last viewed camera that you have is connected to those pieces. So this one's connected to the elbow. Um, I could also put it up here, still consider connected because it would go through this arc here, right? Um, but if I was to swap to my camera over here on this, which is my drop pod, which is in a different video, um, you should get control of this but not have control of the elbow anymore. See, I'm hitting A and D, no control over there. And that's pretty much it. Uh, if you need any help, uh, check the robots forums. Um, the robot sites in the description of the forums is just up on the top bar, it should be fine, easy to find. Probably already know where it is. Um, the other thing you can do is there's a Steam group called Appleton Kingdom. I'm in there pretty much all the time. Um, it's a robots community, and we're normally fairly helpful, but it is very small. Uh, just join chat and see if anyone's in there. Um, of course, not always the case. If no one's in there, just check the forums. If someone's in there, just ask them. See if they can help you. Uh, anyway, that's me signing off. Uh, 
should be 